Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And you join me today with the Alpha Stelvio. And it's not just any old Alpha Stelvio. No, 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 no. This is the Alpha Stelvio Quadrifolio. And it's a rather special car. In actual fact, I've waited nearly a year to get hold of this new version of the Quadrifolio. Now we need to find out what the differences are between the standard Stelvio and the Quadrifolio. Well, for a start, there's 30,000 pound difference, and that's a huge difference. And this one is actually nearly 50,000 pounds more because it's fully loaded as well. So let's take a look around it. Let's have a look under the bonnet, get it out on the road and give you our opinion. So let's take a look around at the front. That's a good place to start. You will notice, obviously, it does look slightly different because you do get the same headlights, these bi-xenons on both models, and you get the same grille here. Now this grille, as you probably realised, is black around the edges, and that's new from Alpha because the old one used to be silvery sort of colour. It was like an, an anodised aluminium colour. But one thing you don't get on a standard Stelvio is this carbon fibre bonnet, and it's absolutely gorgeous with these vents that have been cut into it. To me, this looks like it's a stingray, you know, one of those big fish turned upside down and there it's gills underneath. It looks really, really cool. Another thing you get with this car that you can't get with the standard Stelvio is an active splitter. Now, what I mean by that is the splitter actually moves. It's, this car has an aero pack and the splitter will move accordingly to create the best drag coefficient surface that you can get out of this car when it's channeling its way through at 170 odd miles an hour through the air. So, the wheels themselves, they may look the same as the standard Stelvia, but they're far from it. This is a 20-inch rim. It's also called the petal rim for obvious reasons, but you can now get it in a 21-inch. Why? I don't know, but if you fancy it, it's available. What you will notice is this huge caliper here, this big bright yellow caliper. It's a six-piston caliper, and it will stop this car 70 miles an hour to zero in 55 metres pretty spectacular. That is helped by these carbon ceramic brakes that are in here. Um, they're an extra six and a half thousand pounds if you want them all round. Um, personally, I think I'd be happy with the steel ones, but they do look rather nice because the whole thing sort of matches, doesn't it? Let's move on. So on the Stelvio Quadrifolio, you do get these lovely extended arches all the way around, which look really nice. They give it a much chunkier feel. And another thing you get on this car are these side skirts, carbon fibre side skirts. Again, they sort of make the whole thing look really, I don't know, sporty. It really gives it that edge. One thing that's not that different is the tinted rear screen and the tinted glass at the back here. That's an extra on all of the Stelvios. So that's pretty much the same. And also with the mirrors, these are the foldy any ones, which are really good. So when you lock it up, this whole mirror folds in and it's out of the way and it's not gonna get broken. Because I could see that getting rather expensive. In actual fact, the design of this car is very, it's, it's really sort of super cool. And we met the chief designer of Alfa Romeo's cars. That was a guy called Scott Kruger. It was back in Geneva Motor Show in 2019. Now, if you want to watch that video where we caught up with him and spoke about the new Tonali that he was launching at the time, then click up there now and you can go and watch that video. And it's really great because Scott is very open and tells us everything about, and his favorite car was a Stelvio. Because we said to him, what car do you drive, Scott? And he said, I drive a Stelvio. Aha! There you go. I bet he drives one of these as well. He's not going to drive a standard one, is he? The head designer. Okay, that's something you won't see on a standard Stelvio. That's the Quadrifolio sign. Now, time for a history lesson. So here we go with a little history lesson about the Quadrifolio. Way back in 1923, a certain Ugo Sivocci, I'll say that in my best Italian accent if I can, I hope I pronounced it correctly, was sitting having his breakfast. You know, I hear you saying, who was Ugo Sivocci? Well, he was a member of the Alpha race team. It was a very new team. They'd only just recently got together. But one thing Uvo was not good at was qualifying. He was a reasonable racer, but he wasn't the best at qualifying. And he was sitting there contemplating this over his Rice Krispies, when all of a sudden he saw on the back of the packet, there was a little tiny quadrifolio. Now, in Irish folklore, four-leaf clovers are considered very, very lucky. Likewise, in Italian folklore, they're considered very lucky. And at that point, Uvo decided to get a pair of scissors, cut that little quadrifolio, as they call it, cut it out, and then he put it in his helmet. And he went down to the racetrack. Now, within a couple of laps, he started to feel really good. And believe it or not, yes, you guessed it, he put it on pole. Can you believe that? And he put that luck down to that quadrifolio, that four-leaf clover. 
And then the following day, much to his surprise, he took the four leaf clover with him. And this time he actually put it on the dashboard of his race car and he won the race. And the rest of his friends were like, Uvo, Uvo, you're fantastico. You make a what a change you. You eat too many Rice Krispies. And Uvo said, no, I put the four leaf of clover in the dashboard and now we win the races. Now there were four people in that team. And originally this was a square badge to represent those four racing members of the team. Unfortunately, one of them passed away. Well, they've all passed away now because this was way back in 1923. But at the time, one of them passed away and consequently, it was made into the shape of the triangle for the three remaining members of that. So there you go, a rather lovely story and very poignant when it comes to talking about something rather special like the Quadrifolio on the Alpha Stelvio. Under the bonnet, pretty amazing stuff. This is a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo petrol engine. Originally, it was a V8 Ferrari engine from the 488. It was designed by Gianluca Pavetti and it develops around about 510 brake horsepower, has 600 Newton meters of torque. And just to throw in a few extra bits and pieces, it'll do naught to 60 in 3.8 seconds in race mode with a top speed limited to 176 miles an hour. Now that is all for a car that weighs in at around about 1.8 tons, which is pretty amazing. It's all helped by a carbon fibre drive shaft and an eight speed ZF gearbox that can change gears in 150 milliseconds. One more thing that's worth a mention, this car actually held the lap record for a car in its class at the Nürburgring of seven minutes, 51 seconds. The Stelvio Quadrifoglio comes with a carbon fibre roof spoiler and these lovely new smoke tinted LED rear lights. On the back of the Stelvio Quadrifoglio is a Q4 badge. Now that dictates that this car is all wheel drive. That all wheel drive system is managed by a torque vectoring system that is built into the car. It keeps 100% of that power going to the back wheels, but when required, up to 50% can be transferred to the front as well. Underneath at the back of the Quadrifoglio, there's a multi-link suspension setup which is pretty cool. Um, the actual chassis on this car was designed by a guy called Philip Kreef. Now, Philip used to work for Ferrari. He was the guy who designed the chassis for the Ferrari 458 Special. Mm. So there is a little bit of Ferrari involvement even on the chassis element of this car. Um, there is another nice part of this car, the adaptive suspension. This is Alpha's DNA system. Let's go and have a look at that. Up front, active damping is controlled by Alpha's DNA button here. Well, it's more of a knob than a button. Now, you've got three modes in the Stelvio, um, but in the Quadrifoglio, you've got four modes. I'll explain where the DNA comes from. So the active efficiency is your A, that's your economy mode. Then if you move it up to N, that's natural or naturale, as they say in Italian, which is your normal mode when you're normally driving from A to B. And then you can go into dinamico or dynamic, which is sport mode to it, you and me. Then, because we've got the quadrifoglio, we can then turn it up to race mode by holding it over. There she goes, battles now wide open. Doesn't that, did you hear that drop? That is just stunning. All of this comes up on the screen there. So you don't even need to look down while you're driving. You can see it's come up on the screen. You know you're in race mode. You know you can have some fun. DNA, we love it. For an extra three and a half thousand pounds, you can have these amazing Akrapovich exhausts. Hmm. Time for another history lesson. So here's your next little history lesson. Akrapovich exhausts. A guy called Igor Akrapovich from Slovenia started this company way back in 1990. He was making exhausts for motorbikes, but word soon spread that these exhausts were fantastic. And it wasn't soon after that in 2010 that the car industry got involved with him. Since then, the company now turns over over a hundred million pounds a year in exhausts and employs 1,400 people. Not bad for a little exhaust manufacturer. Let's check out inside the boot of the Stelvio. And it's got an electronically assisted tail lift. You just push the little button there in the middle of the number plate or just above it. You can get it with one of those uh, swipeys if you want it. Totally up to you. Um, 
525 litres of boot space. It's absolutely massive. And if by the magic of pulling that seat button and that seat button over there, those seats go down, you will have 1,600 litres of boot space. That's huge, absolutely huge. There's a 12 volt adapter just down here and underneath here, well, sadly, in this case, you get a puncture repair outfit. Throw that away, get yourself a space saver or invest in a set of run flats. Here we are in the back where the passengers normally go. And the first thing I noticed wasn't passengers. Check out these Sparco bucket race seats. And they're carbon fiber as well. Extra 3,250 pounds. A mere snip for something like that. I mean, you've got to have them if you buy a car like this, definitely. You've got these uh, jet engine style air vents here. No independent heating or anything. Who cares? A couple of USBs down there, keep the little brats happy in the back. And if they're even smaller brats, then you've got isofix points either side as well. And they're the poppy uppy ones, so you're not gonna lose them either. Lovely, lovely green stitch in here. And check this out, you've got to see this. Green seat belts on this car. These are optional, so you can just spec it up the way you want. In the center here, you get a decent pull down. You've got a double cup holder and that. And to be honest, with this Alcantara, the leather, the carbon, Oh, does it all tick those boxes for a family car. Let's get up the front. Let's check up front for the driver because that's what Alphas are all about. And just jumping into that beautiful seat. I mean, it's just built for long distance driving, for sports driving, it's, it holds you, it hugs you. It's not fully electronic. So forward and backwards and sort of the tilt, you have to do manually, but who cares? There is a little electronic bit down here that will do the height of the seat, so you can go up and down on it, but the rest of it, I like being able to maneuver it how I like it. Um, keyless entry and keyless ignition, and a lovely little place to put the key here. So I'm gonna pop that in there. Um, I'm just gonna push the Ferrari start button, because there's a little red Ferrari button there. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna put my foot on the brake because that start the engine, make loads of noise. Um, we do that in a minute when we get it out on the road. Here we go. So we've got just over eight inch touchscreen. It's all firing up at the moment. Alpha Romeo badge coming up there. Love it, absolutely stunning. There's a seven inch um, digital screen over here. Well, the center's digital, either side is analog. So on your right, you've got your speedo on your left, you've got your tachy meter, your rev meter there. On the right here, you've got your lighting set up. So that's very easy. You just stick it into the auto mode. Likewise, on the wiper stalk, you just stick that into the auto mode using the little flick switch there. Uh, Harman Kardon surround system in this car, 15 speakers, no less. I mean, it is the upgraded option, but wow, is it amazing. Now controlling all your digital media in this car is done on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So you've got your telephone system there, you've got your volume, then you've got your left and right scroll buttons, which you can change your tracks using your Bluetooth, your Apple Play, or if you're on your DAB radio, it'll change the stations. Um, then just down to the left, you've got your Ask Alpha button, as I call it. It's basically Siri or Alexa, you just push that and you can command it to search for tracks or get, you know, all sorts of bits and pieces you can do with that. Really worthwhile, very good that. On the left hand side are your driving aids as I call them. So you've got your lane keepy, your distance control, you've got your resume and your set button here so you can actually set it up how you want, what distance you want. Um, top right you've got a speed limiter and then a button I wasn't expecting on this car is the hill descent control button. Excellent to have that on an all wheel drive car. Doesn't get much better really. Normally on a car, you know, only on the top luxury end. But this comes, I've noticed you can have it as an option on all the Stelvios, which is great. I love the steering wheel. Again, little quadrifolios here. There's one there. There's another one on the dashboard. And I also noticed another one down here on the actual door, door. When you open the door, it's on that little door skirt there. Let's have a look in the center. But I mean, there is bundles and bundles of carbon everywhere. Eight, just over eight inch touchscreen. This is Alpha's latest infotainment system. It is so up there with BMW, Audi, Mercedes, the rest of them. Alpha needed to do something with this and they've done it. They've actually produced something absolutely amazing. Um, and it's equally as good as all the competition now. So this car is really ticking some boxes. Again, all the green stitching, look, it's all matching. And that, don't forget, you know, like it was in the back, I showed you those green seat belts. Well, they're here again up the front as well. And again, don't forget, this is an option. You can get these. Um, glove box wise, well, again, you get that stupid book. Why do they, look, it's taken up all the space in a, a tiny, tiny glove box. Throw these away, get rid of them, we don't need them. You can do it all online these days. You don't need to have a big book in there. And perhaps that would be a nice way of giving us a space saver instead. There you go, Alpha giving you a good idea there. Um, hidden behind here, I'm gonna shut it again because oodles and oodles more of carbon fiber. Love a bit of carbon fiber. Um, you've got your um, 
USB there, you've got a 12 volt there, heating systems here. Check out the knobs, guys, come on. I mean, this is what I call a selection of knobs, you know? <laughs> There's more knobs, well, yeah, never mind. Look, everything here is geared towards the driver. So you get in this car in the middle of the winter, you've got your gloves on, you don't want to be fiddling around on a touch screen, taking your gloves off, trying to find the heating controls, you know? Here, put them on. And if you want a volume control, there's one there, easy. And you can go left and right, like you do on the steering wheel, you can do it left and right there as well. Absolutely brilliant. Big, big black knob here. Guys, I was almost salivating over this when I got in this car. That's a proper knob, look. And you can rotate through your scroll, through your systems there. It's lovely. Very BMW. I did, didn't want to say that too out loud. Um, settings button there, home button there. Check out in here. Nice cubby. Yet again, more USBs. USB-C, standard USB, aux in, 12 volt. And then, to top it all, if you really need it, there is a wireless charger in there for your Apple devices. Wonderful. It's so comfortable just to sit here, pull the door to there, and it really is just suddenly you're encompassed by absolute total luxury. Leather, carbon, steel, aluminium, it's all here. It's got everything. What's it sound like on the road? We really need to get this car out on the road. Let's go do it and have some fun. So here we are, out on the road, in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And um, wow, I have so enjoyed driving this car. It is so different to the standard Stelvio. It's unbelievable. Um, it was only a couple of weeks ago that we actually road tested the Stelvio uh, Veloce, because there's five different models in the Stelvio range. Um, if you check up there now, and you'll see that Veloce, lovely blue, Mizuno, Mizuno blue, beautiful color. Um, check up there now, watch that video as a little comparison to this, because I was enthralled by that car, but this car has completely blown me away. Um, I think, uh, looking at it all around, it's a Stelvio at the end of the day. It's not, you're not gonna change the body shape or the, the actual view out of the front screen or the, the mirrors or looking in that mirror. If I close my eyes and put some earmuffs on, because obviously I can hear the difference in the engine, I'm driving a Stelvio. There's a lot of carbon fiber, um, there's a big red button there that says stop start. That's about the only real difference in here. Um, the biggest difference, obviously, I can hear that engine. Even in the natural mode, in the normal mode, I can hear that engine. And as soon as I put it into you know, the dynamic, you can feel the difference, the pickup, uh, the sport modes, basically. So things have tightened up, but you can also see that we're now bobbling around quite a bit um, because that sport suspension, that adaptive suspension has just kicked in. And obviously, if we then go into the race mode, you hold over for five seconds. Oh, <laughs> now it's a little bit wet today, so that's the only issue. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh that just sounds something special. That is something special, really, seriously. Um, the, I was about to say we've got a, before I got totally blown away there. Um, when you put it into race mode, to get that lovely open baffle sound, it turns off all the traction control. Ideally, what we should have is in the dynamic mode, you should have an option to turn the baffles off. Uh, that would be quite nice because you still have your traction control. And on a day like today, I'm actually gonna put it back into uh, natural mode. There we go, we go back into normal mode. You see how quick it happens, so quick. Didn't even have to look down. Um, it's a little bit safer having the traction on when you're in the wet on a public road. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. But that is a shame because if you want to enjoy that sound, you do have to put it into the race mode. Um, but still, what a load of fun. And you get a load of things up on the screen here that you don't get in your normal Stelvio, like all your race bits and pieces that you can do your 0 to 60 times, your lap times, because I reckon you'd have tremendous fun in this car out on track. Let's talk practicality on this. Okay, so I said I've had it for a linear week. I've had bikes in the back, I've had dogs in the back, I've taken my son and his mates to school in the back, um, and they all insisted we put it in race mode, obviously, teenage kids, you know, oh, Dad, yeah, do me a favour, Dad, put it in the race mode when you pull away. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I? Street cred, that's what this car's all about. It's got that little, and you notice it when you're driving it, people just, yeah, it's an Alpha. What one is that? That's the Stelvia. Wow. So I think as probably the most practical all-round car in the world has got to be the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. There you go, I've said it. Because it just ticks every box. It's got the power, it's got the comfort, it's got the practicality. Um, ah, 
Economy. Let's talk economy, because that might be letting it down. Because around town, I'm only getting around 20 to the gallon, which isn't exceptional. However, and you know I love saying a big however, I took it on a run the other day, and over 200 miles on the motorway in the advanced efficiency mode, I was getting over 30 to the gallon. Now, when you are quoted by a motor manufacturer as 27 to 28, you don't expect to exceed that because you know what manufacturers are like. They do tend to you know, push the boundaries when it comes to their miles per gallon. But we actually exceeded Alpha's expectations, shall we say, of 27 to 28 to the gallon. We exceeded it. So a first, an absolute first in every car I've ever tested. They never normally match up to the manufacturers. This, this actually went over 30, just over 30.1, and I've got the proof as well. Um, Warranty-wise, you get the standard Alpha warranty. It's a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, and with that, you do get the service, the, not the service, the breakdown recovery, home start, and all that. You're not gonna need it in this car. It's too well built, but it's there, and it comes as part of your warranty as well. So three years unlimited. I could say maybe it would be better if we went up to five years or even seven years, but I'm happy to do one of these, to be honest. Uh, Five-year service and care plan as well. So you can chat to the salesman when you go down. There's all different plans and different prices to suit your pocket and your needs and your mileage. So I can't give you a one quote on this. It just doesn't work. Um, it's an incredible car to drive. It, 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 this is where it all boils down to the crux of it. Is it worth the extra money? Well, at the beginning of this video, I said there was a 30,000 difference. There is a 30,000 difference. However, and you know, we're going down the however route, I'm probably a little bit unfair because the entry level Stelvio is 30 grand difference. Whereas if you had the Veloce, which is one below this, there's probably only around about 20,000 pounds difference. Would I go for the Stelvio Veloce or would I go for the Quadrifoglio? I think it's all gonna go down to the, the fact, if you can afford one of these, I don't think there is any question about it. Even on, serv on, on the uh, uh, finance plan, you can buy one of these for around 478 per month. That's not bad when, when you consider what you're getting for your money. I think as an all-round car, I love the Veloce. It, it did have everything I wanted in the car, but this has got a few bits and pieces just take it to the next level. Okay, the ceramic brakes and things like that. I think you've got to have the carbon bucket seats. I do think you've got to have those, because come on, they, they just look absolutely sensational. Um, yeah, if you knock down on a few bits and pieces, you're going to get back down to that around sort of 70 grand. Um, and that, that amount per month, I've got to say, I think I'd do it. I would. But nevertheless, Give the Veloce a go as well. It's well worth it because it is that bit, you know, it's quite a big difference. Uh, you don't get the race mode in it, as you've probably seen when you watch the video, but it's, uh, this car is all about soul. It's about passion, what you want and what you can afford at the end of the day. I love it. I don't think you're gonna better it, not for a long, long time. Alpha, you've done an amazing job. You've put one of the biggest smiles on my face and my family, so what can I say? So there you have it guys, another video from AJ the player and I hope you really enjoyed that one. I did, I enjoyed making it as well. But before you go, I'm gonna give you something for free. Yes, something for free. It's called the Player Bookazine. Now, if you're not aware, the Player is a much bigger organization than just a YouTube channel. We are part of a big magazine. It's a bookazine for guys. It's got cars, it's got boats, it's got planes, golf, helicopters, interviews. Everything us guys love. And ladies, if you are watching, please feel free to have a look because there's nothing untoward in our pages. It's all there for everybody to enjoy, but it's mainly geared towards a male lifestyle. There you go. Now, you can have the online version of this completely free of charge. You can't have the big book. Um, that costs £100 each. I'd love to give you one for nothing, but I don't think my boss would be too happy about that. But you can have the online one. And we're not even going to data capture off you because all you've got to do is put your name in and your email. And then you can download it or you can actually flick the pages online because the clever bods at the player have made it so you can do it with your finger or a mouse. Very clever. I love using it. It's, great. it's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so now you need to know how to get that. Two ways. One is, hang on, 
pull that in there. There you go, www.player.co.uk. Go straight to the subscribe section. Just stick your name and your email in there, like I said. Hang on, I'll leave it up there for a minute so you can remember, I'll do better than that, ready? There you go, up there. There's a link straight through to the website. Go there as well if you want. When you get there, just fill in those details that I told you about. Simple as, and it's all yours, and you don't owe us anything. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to the actual AJ the Player YouTube channel. Because if you subscribe, then you're gonna get, you know, regular updates, if you leave the bell sign unchecked, of course, do that. And then we're putting up different videos every week. You know, could be anything. Even I don't know half the time. That's good fun about doing this job. One thing that I would like to ask you is don't forget the thumbs up, guys, because I don't get pay rises, I don't get bonuses, you know, it's no more money in it, but it is. Pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors. It means we're doing a good job. If you don't think we're doing a good job, don't give us a thumbs up. But if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week with something else.